G'day punters, welcome to the Mailbag. First ever preview focused solely on Sydney. This week's meetings at Randwick. Uh, we're going to focus on the quaddy legs and to do that we've got Mark Sheen joining us again. Mark, how are you? Good, thanks Jack. Pistol? Dicko. We expect a little bit more energy from you Pistol than we, our viewers <laughs> might be used to with the Victorian stuff. So this is your area of expertise, the New South Wales stuff and obviously Mark's bread and butter so we're going to start with race six with the, which is the toy show quality 1100 meters group three for fillies and mares uh up will come pete speed map and the synthetic hold of the race uh add along ridden by tim clark is our favorite uh pistol thoughts here yeah i thought i mean look add along's best runs for mine have been second up into a prep and although it's probably got a fair bit of residual fitness you know 70 days off i thought the trial was pretty solid it's coming from some pretty decent form lines as well. But there's a couple here, and especially if it's playing like a real bog track and they're able to make any ground there at Randwick on Saturday. I thought Riverbird was pretty good first up last prep. Um, does handle the heavy conditions. Thought the trials were actually pretty decent as well. Um, one of them was very quiet in particular. So that's probably the way I'd be leaning at the current price. But again, judging by race six, we should have a pretty good idea of if they're able to make some ground and which lanes are in play. I suspect earlier and for some of the longer races, it may very well be on speed, a bit more of a of an advantage and it's even played a little bit stronger along the rails of late. So that's the way I'll be thinking in those early races. But if they're able to make some ground, I'll just be looking at Riverbird there at a small bet in race six. Mark, have you got uh, an opinion, which I guess would be pretty hard to have one though, on, on how this track might play? Yeah, the last time I went back to the uh, normal position after the rail had been out nine, it did look to be an advantage to be on speed. So, um, but we do have a, a a lot drier track than uh, that on that occasion. That was, uh, I think, a heavy eight or nine. But uh, we're going to be a lot better than that. We've had a clear uh, week for rain and uh, plenty of wind, so it should be on the improve somewhat. So maybe on the worst side of slow to start with, and maybe getting a little bit better. So, but. We're guessing a little bit with these tracks because they do uh, change quite regularly. Um, I think Adalong may be a little bit vulnerable with uh, Witherspoon in the race, putting the speed on. She might have to do a bit of chasing. I do agree that uh, Riverbird has uh, tried quite well, and I thought Yamazaki tried quite well. Didn't have a great deal of wet form, but if, if the track's not too bad, I think with all the speed up front, it might be storming home late. So obviously just have a look at the pattern of the day. And even though Sweet Deal has finished down the track in a couple of trials, I think she hasn't been knocked about. She's got a lot of weight here, but got a lot of class, and she can sprint well fresh. All right, we head to race seven, 400-metre Winks Stakes. It's, now, it's a group one. And our favourite is Master of Wine at the moment. Well, it's joint favourite, depending where you're looking, but Master of Wine and very elegant. Six dollars um, plus the field. Peter, yeah, thoughts here? Dreamforce, Bostonian. Oh, it's, I mean, just having a look at the uh, at the field at first glance and you've got so many of these runners that are first up and there's a heap of trials to work through and... I found a couple of nice trials, but again, whether or not they're going to be ready to, to fire first up, that's probably the question. I think um, Zabrowski's in for a decent prep just off its trials. Uh, didn't even mind it based on the, some of the form lines it was racing around in last prep. But the horse I, I settled with um, was one of my favourites last prep, and that's Conte Partiro. Um, she just trialled particularly strong, was good past the post, goes well in the wet, Put will put itself or herself onto onto the bunny, probably just behind Quacker Jack and Dreamforce, I think. Um, and again, if we're getting any positive sign or indication that on speed or rails and runs suited, then certainly that will just further add to my confidence. But I think the double figure quote that you can still get at the moment is pretty decent. So I want to start by building a book around that horse. Pretty, uh, pretty big start for the trial reports, Mark. You've got a fair bit of work to do here. Yeah, I think I'll have the matchsticks in the eyes tonight. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, we've got plenty. Uh, I think the yard will be very important with Rob yep. uh, as well. Um, I've got the Bostonian on top. Just uh, thought it might could a good suck run just behind the speed, but very wary of Master of Wine. Try without the blinkers and hit the line very strongly on both occasions. And Connie Patero was the other one that I had in. So they're the three in the race for me, but the Bostonian on top to start with. All right, we had to race eight. Which is, that's not loading here, Peter. Yep, 1,400 metres. And uh, benchmark 88 handicap. 
Do you want oh. the market as well? Jermaine, <laughs> I think this Jermaine is harder than favorite. the favourite franchise. Well, yeah. hey. this is the ex Kent horse now Waller who uh, went bust in Queensland. BZ copped it on Twitter relentlessly. Canane, pistol thoughts here. Oh, I think as as Mark was just saying, this this does look very very difficult. Uh, I think the form that Poetic Charm has been coming through, it's it's pretty solid. And it's got a bit of a fitness edge on quite a few of these, but I think the price is probably about right. Uh, I've got time for for a few of these, but not first up. And I, I thought Bobby D actually trialed okay, and if they ride it with a bit of intent, it might be able to give a little bit of cheek. But this really doesn't look like too much of a of a betting race for me. Uh, what do you think, Mark? Um, I thought Nudge's trials have been okay, drawn in the car park, but uh, if you can make grand, I thought she was worth a speck at a bit of odds. Uh, she's been pretty hard held in both trials and finished in front of Canaan on both occasions, or I thought trial better than Canaan mm. at, at the very least. So um, does have to overcome that wide draw. Poetic Charmer does have the advantage of the race fitness and Minted going up for the uh, 1,400 metres for the first time. He's a little bit tardy at the start, but... Uh, I think with that race fitness and a good draw on his side, he's probably in the mix as well. But uh, if they can make ground, I might have something on nudge there. What do you think of the trials of Canaan? Um, look, I thought it, uh, he's a horse who I think needs to be revved up, and I don't think there was, you know, there was much intent there from the 200 metres. It only shook him up for a few strides. If you saw him win that day at Wyong, he was into him yeah. for about two furlongs to get going, and then then he exploded. I think he's the sort of horse you've got to keep at. Um, same sort of run in Brisbane where he got a long way back and sustained a long run. Um, depends how he looks. He doesn't carry much condition. So I'd say he'd be fairly forward. Um, just depends on price. I couldn't have him at that short odds at the moment. But if, if he did get out to about eight or nine to one, different story. All right, we finished with race nine, 1,200 metres. Benchmark 78, pretty rough for the for the quarter punters. There's about $5, $5.50 the field. Uh, up comes the synth hold and the speed map from Pistol. Have you got any thoughts for this race? Oh, <laughs> I'm, this is probably my least keen race of the day. I, I found Ice Bath on top, but that was pretty much as a result of, of last preparation. I thought some of that form was pretty decent. You know, nice little track distance figure in there as well. It, in the trial, it was I thought it was pretty good. Didn't necessarily have to uh, have to do very much and wasn't suited throughout. So. Yeah, that was probably the way I was leaning. But then you look at the market and there's just really not much wiggle room there whatsoever. And uh, I think just that you could make small cases for quite a few of these without really having too much confidence. So I think without knowing how the track's playing and everything else like that, race nine will have a much better idea then. But um, looking at it this early stage, I, I won't be playing, that's for sure. Um, I think Ice Bar is probably one of the best of the day if you can make ground. I think she's got a lap on these on form. That that form around uh, IndyCar and those horses last time in, uh, in my opinion, is a lot better than these horses. Uh, hard held in a trial at Gosford the other day, hit the line strongly. Uh, she loves a bit of sting out of the ground, races well at Ramwick. As I said, if they can make ground, I think she's uh, going to be too good for these. So Ice Bath, uh, number nine for me. Bartley is a query. He's a three-year-old taking on the older horses here, but his trials have been very good this time in. And the other one I had in was uh, Betcha Flying. Uh, maybe a bit short for her, but she does like to sting out of the ground, had a very easy trial at the Gold Coast and normally does sprint well fresh. Hasn't won first up, but she's always been running on strong and shorter races uh, without being overly knocked about. So that'll be your best then, race nine, number nine, Ice Bath, Mark? If they can make ground, yes. So I think later in the day we should be able to so hopefully that track will cut out a little bit if there is an advantage to the, on the rail early, but uh, hopefully later in the day. Uh, she'll be about midfield or maybe past it, so uh, just monitor how the track's playing. But uh, if the track is okay, I think she's probably the best, yep. And are there any value bets throughout the card that you want to give out to the punter at home? Um, there's one in the highway uh, which won the other day at Scone. It's me, number 14 in race number two. Another one that will get back a little bit, but uh, so you'll have to try and... Fathom from race number one, if you can make ground. And in race three, I thought uh, this is so as an improver, uh, jumped up to uh, 1,500 metres, or that was its second run, I should say, at 1,500 at Canterbury last start, sat three wide all the way. Just getting fitter, this horse looked magnificent before the race and ran right up to it. So I think 1,600 metres of Ramwick will suit him. Beautiful. Peter, best and value. 
please. That, they're the same horse. So Connie for me in the Wink Stakes. Um, obviously, I've got a lot of time for this for this mare, and I think Rob as well will be pretty key in the yard. I remember uh, last prep he didn't necessarily find her on one occasion when she won, but that was just her and, and getting to know the the mare. So I'm keen to to hear his thoughts. Um, on that horse in particular. So, yeah, best and value are the, are the same one for me at this stage. Righto, boys, that's us. Really appreciate it. Excited to have you on, Mark. Great start. Uh, let's Thanks, hope Jim. we can Thanks, find Blake. some winners.